text-to-voice synthesis provided by Vidnami. About, Firearms. January 5, 2021 by Anna Von writes. Everyone please pay attention so I don't have to go over all this again and again and again. Here's the facts, folks. Firearms are never described in the actual law pertaining to Americans, as opposed to the municipal code which some people are mistaking for our public law, which does describe firearms, and the territorial federal code, which also describes firearms in a slightly different context. What Americans have is the right to keep and bear arms. Our law doesn't say anything about firearms at all. On our own turf, we have the unabridged right to have, keep, bear, and use any kind of armament at all. Rifles, howitzers, sling slots, tanks, airplanes, rockets, knives, nail guns, self-propelled grenades, bombs, Molotov cocktails, drones, BB guns, machine guns, throwing axes, whatever. Period. The Municipal Code, which is foreign law with respect to Americans, defines firearms. The Territorial Federal Code, which is foreign law with respect to Americans, also defines firearms. This is yet another semantic deceit and red herring that has its roots in the post-Civil War era when the capital city was afraid that U.S. Army units would use artillery and small firearms to stage a takeover. This was later amended in 1933, after the glory days of Al Capone, to firearms in the vein of rifles and Tommy guns and sawed-off shotguns used by gangsters, and none of it pertains to us at all. Municipal code is a separate body of purely, federal, law that pertains solely to the administration of the municipality of Washington, D.C. Last time I looked, it is about 2,800 pages long including definitions and addendums, and costs about $1,800 per copy, with the result that most Americans have never even seen a copy of the Municipal Code. My point is that the Municipal Code was originally intended to prevent artillery and cannons from being brought into Washington, D.C., and didn't impact our right to keep and bear arms outside the city limits, a separate topic, at all. That is why the Municipal Code was allowed to stand, and the reason it still stands. They get the right to dictate to their own citizenry and to control their own premises, but they can in no way pass legislation affecting our rights on our turf. Rod Class made the mistake and I told him it was a mistake, to try to go into their set apart little enclave and claim his guarantees, as an American, doing that makes as much sense as going to Ireland, violating Irish law, and then claiming it doesn't apply to you because you are an American. If you are an American in America, your law applies. If you are an American in Ireland, their law applies. Rod Class was an American in the municipality of Washington, D.C., which is an independent international city-state. Their law applied and their law defines, firearms. This is all part of the Patriots being confused about the nature of their federal subcontractors and also being confused about where and when their constitutional guarantees apply. If you go onto a U.S. Air Force base anywhere on Earth, I trust that you know that you can't swagger in with a weapon? And if you do, you may be mistaken for an enemy combatant? That's an example of territorial codes applying within the perimeter of arsenals and is also a foreign law, simply a better known foreign law generally called, Federal Code. The Territorial Federal Code has grown to more than 50 separate sections called, Titles, covering different topics and it does discuss, Firearms, particularly in Title 27 which covers the BATF and the nuts and bolts administration of the regulatory power that the federal subcontractors were granted by the Constitution of the United States of America to regulate the interstate sale, transport, and manufacture of tobacco, alcohol, and firearms as a source of revenue to support the federal government. It was an early sin tax. Firearms in the 1780s meant guns with firing pans, what we would call, black powder, guns. The federal government was supposed to eke its earnings out of whatever it could raise as revenue from the interstate manufacture, sale, or transport, across state lines, of such firearms. They have more or less sensibly extrapolated that right to regulate, firearms, to include modern small arms and profited themselves from licensing them not their owners. But once again, firearms is a topic that never finds reference to Americans standing on their own turf. The definition of firearms only appears in either municipal or territorial terms in foreign law and with respect to foreign jurisdictions. 
the municipality of Washington, D.C. is a foreign, independent, international city-state operating in the global jurisdiction of the air. The territorial government is a separate, foreign, British Commonwealth entity operating in the international jurisdiction of the sea. Both are foreign. Both operate under foreign law. And neither one can dictate Jack Diddley squat to an American standing on the land and soil of his own state of the Union, or exercising any reserved right, not explicitly addressed by their respective constitutions, so long as he is standing in his own right, and operating on his own turf. The municipality of Washington, D.C., as I have pointed out with monotonous regularity, is a separate international city-state, completely independent of the rest of this country, ruled over by the members of the United States Municipal Congress, acting as a plenary oligarchy, and it is set apart and allowed to function in this manner by Article 1 Section 8, Clause 17. The capital city does not belong to us, Americans, and it never has. It was set up this way on purpose, both to invite foreign investment to bear the cost of building it, and to provide a meeting place where members of all 50 states could gather on neutral ground. The Municipal Code of Washington, D.C., applies to all corporations formed in Washington, D.C., which is the only reason that this topic bears much discussion at all, with respect to firearms or anything else. Rod Class made the mistake of bringing firearms, according to their Municipal Code definition, into their foreign enclave, and thinking that their law didn't apply on their turf. He apparently thought that his constitutional guarantees were owed to him everywhere on earth, but a little thought will prove that this is not true, nor is it reasonable to assume. Do you have any sacred right to keep and bear arms on the island of Bali? Don't you grant that the Balinese would have something to say about that? And if they didn't want you to have a point three five seven tucked under your arm during your vacation stay, for fear you might use it against their people, wouldn't they as a foreign government have a right to impound your weapon? If you snuck your weapon past their border guards and customs agents in spite of their efforts to clearly post and give notice of their restrictions, wouldn't they have a right to charge you with such crimes as willful criminal mischief, even if you left your gun locked up in a gun case the whole time? Of course, they would. And it is the same with Washington, D.C. The municipal officials threw the book at Rod Class and they had every right to. I warned him before he did it and told him why, but he was a bonehead and he went shishaying into Washington, D.C., with a couple deer rifles and God knows what in his truck. He's lucky he got out alive, and though I love him dearly, he's still a bonehead and hasn't learned any of the lessons I have tried to teach him, complete with evidentiary proof. How hard is it, after all, to read Article 1, Section 8, Clause 17 when someone points it out to you, and take in the meaning of, plenary oligarchy. Until people stop screwing around and learn to drive on their own side of the road, a lot of good men are going to be needlessly hurt and a great deal of brain power and effort is going to be wasted. Every American needs to learn and needs to know, for certain, that the federal government is being run by foreign subcontractors and when I say foreign, I mean foreign in the same sense that Spain is foreign to Denmark. They operate under foreign laws called codes and statutes and regulations, and they operate in foreign international and global jurisdictions that most Americans have no reason to visit, except perhaps as tourists. The territorials were granted a right to regulate and profit from the interstate manufacture, sale or transport of firearms, and so, they will, within reason, update the meaning of firearms into the modern world, and they will regulate away with gusto every time there is manufacture, sale or transport of small arms across state borders. They can also, license, federally regulated goods, and they can also license their own citizenry with or without that specific regulatory authority, but it is severely doubtful that their regulatory authority extends to licensing Americans when those Americans are standing on their own soil. So far as I know, the question of federal regulatory authority to license Americans to do anything at all, and I do mean anything, on their own turf, has never been breached in the Supreme Court of the United States but it certainly should be, because the federales of both stripes have been trespassing against us and usurping against our people by registering and licensing activities of common right without authority to do so. That is a topic worthy of fighting over. The right of the municipality of Washington, D.C., to ban firearms within their own city boundaries, is not a worthy topic to even debate. 
the right of the territorial government to regulate, interstate, manufacture, sale, and transport of alcohol, tobacco, and, firearms, is another don't bother me with it topic. Read your constitutions and you can see for yourselves exactly what they are allowed and not allowed. Stand aside and let them do what they are clearly allowed to do, and stomp on them if they cross the line and trespass. It really is as simple and as difficult as that. The municipal denizens were gifted with a plenary oligarchy on our eastern seaboard, and until we get angry enough with their shenanigans to boot them into the sea and reclaim the ground under the city, which still belongs to Maryland and Virginia, by the way, that's their turf. The territorial federales can regulate and profit from the interstate sale, manufacture or transport of exactly three commodities. If they try to extend their paws to include other commodities or include activities taking place in non-interstate environments, like your backyard, tell them where to get off and do it in no uncertain terms. Most of all, make it crystal clear that you are an American, and not any species of municipal or territorial person at all. Go to www.theamericanstatesassembly.net and record your political status as an American who is owed every jot of the constitutions, and then learn when and where the constitutional guarantees apply, so that you don't wind up in jail or worse.